ordering food in a Mexican restaurant can sometimes be a little complicated. For example, if I wanted to order this combo over here, I'd have to say chicken enchilada, light sour cream sauce, chili relleno, and two beef taquitos. Or I could simply tell the waiter I want a number 12, and he'd understand exactly what I meant. Now, what I would be doing essentially is using a macro, one simple command to represent several complex commands. Of course, computer software lets you use macros, but despite powerful macro features on most word processors and spreadsheets, very few users actually get around to using them. Today, we'll show you how to get into the wonderful world of macros on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software. The SBA provides information on how to stay software legal. Funding is also provided by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week is Tim Baharin of Creative Strategies. Hi. Tim, we're talking about macros, and here's a kind of neat hardware approach to macros. This, as you can see, is a separate little hardware device, the AutoKey 2020 from Mextel. What it is is a strip here of 20 function keys. Each of these keys can hold 20 separate right. keystrokes inside here, and it's very easy to use. For example, I simply defined M2 as a paragraph of text I wanted to get inside here. Uh, types it right out, just as I did it with my mistakes, by the way. Uh, I want to reformat that. I hit M5 over here. And it did a lot of reformatting commands so that if I were to hit that same macro again, you see some differences now. It's right justified instead of left justified and so on. Uh, very, very powerful. Macros are very, very powerful, but many users never get around to figuring out how to use them. It's like all those goodies on your camcorder you never, right. you never figure out how to use. Well, macros are designed to speed things up, to make it easier to use a program. But as you know, they are sometimes very difficult to use. And in some places, they almost have to be a programmer yeah. to use it. These new devices, whether they be hardware or in software, and or even some of the books with the templates, uh -huh. they actually help speed up the process, demystify it, and make it easier to use. And these new things are really going to make macros more popular in the future. Mm -hmm. Tim, we're going to look at three different approaches to using macros, hardware solutions like this auto key, macro packages for specific software titles, and the built-in macro writing features of programs like WordPerfect or Excel. Now, another hardware approach to macros is the Power Mouse from Prohance, which lets you execute hundreds of commands with one click of the mouse. Here's a report. When the County of Santa Cruz decided to computerize its assessor parcel maps, it turned to Landbase Corporation for help. Using shortcuts with the power mouse, Landbase was able to digitize the 435 square mile county on computer in just a few months. The power mouse is a versatile input device that can link as many as 240 macros to its 40 buttons. Each macro can be as long as 255 characters. But Landbase programmed the mouse for simple macros to use with the AutoCAD design program. Now, instead of punching in three or four commands to erase a line, users can just click one button on the power mouse. Zooming and drawing are also programmed to specific buttons. As a result, power mouse users perform the same functions with 80% less hand movement. If you have to type in the commands or if you have to run the mouse over to a menu, you find you're spending most of your time setting up the command and very small amount of the time actually doing the work, putting the lines down on the drawing. And the mouse, of course, increases productivity because draw a line is simply a push of the button now instead of having to type draw a line or instead of having to move the mouse over to the, to the, cur or the menu on the side of the screen. Using macros to decrease mouse movement has increased productivity in another way as well. Anytime you can, you can avoid keystrokes or avoid movement and the uh, probability of incorrectly positioning, it's going to cut down on errors. And that adds up again to productivity. And accuracy is key to the maps. The Santa Cruz County Assessor's Office is now busy adding tax area codes and zoning boundaries to its new computerized maps. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Kate McGargy.
The most widely used software programs in business are WordPerfect and Lotus 123. And here to show us the power of macros in both those applications are James Morgan of Individual Software and Gordon McComb, author of a new book on using macros in WordPerfect 5.1. Tim? Gordon, macros are somewhat personal, but how do you make them more available and functional to the rest of the market? Well, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Uh, the way that I've done it is to write a book. Uh, I think that that's one of the, you know, I think that's the best way to make a feature of any program more accessible. Uh, this book does also come with the software with with the macros on a disk, mm. so that does uh, uh, speed things up. Speed things up. They don't have to to uh, copy them from the disk. James, you have the same problem. You came out with a whole package on a disk of software macro of macros for Lotus One Two Three. How did you kind of figure out what I mean? What functions? What tasks people need? Originally started by us producing individual training for Lotus macros for the individual who wanted to learn how to build their own macros, and that naturally gravitated into pre-canned macros. We got feedback from people concerning what they were interested in doing. Uh, as we stand now, we have approximately 150 macros uh, ready to go, and they are all modifiable, covering all versions of Lotus 2 and 3. All right, give us some examples, James. You have your, your program up here. Show us how you would load one right. of the macros off your disk. I'm down in a blank section of the spreadsheet right here, so what I'm going to do is load a macro from scratch. I want to bring it up, and I want to bring in a file. So again, we've got your floppy disk inside the computer here yes, with the do. macros on it. I'm going to combine a file, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to name a specific range. In this case, it's a macro for headings. Okay. It's now going to look out on the disk. In this case, I'm going to default to the A drive. And these are the major subtitles. Within each one of these, for example, under two copy, there is about 10 or 15 macros. I'm mm -hmm. involving one involving the date. Okay. So I'm going to bring in one from the date. This is one macro from the date directory. This particular one here is called the heading. Once and that's the macro. This right is there. the macro from top to bottom here. It is entirely modifiable, so I can use the edit key to change things. For example, if I want it to handle 24 months instead of 12, that can okay. all be changed. So you've essentially just loaded a Lotus file into the I have, but it is not usable yet. Okay. Once it's loaded, you have to range name it, so we're going to do that next. Okay. Again, we're going to bring up the main menu. We're going to range, name, label it to the right with an end and a down arrow and a return. Now this macro is functional. If you notice in the upper left corner there, you've got a backslash so H. H yeah. That is what it takes to activate this macro. Okay. So if we were to go to another section of the program now, mm -hmm. I can activate that macro by hitting Alt-H. It comes up and it says, do you want the titles to go across or go down? In this case, we'll use down, D for down. And how many months do you want? Well, I'll just choose 12 months in this case. And it defaults right. and adds January so, through. So it's not too hard to load. It's not very hard user. at all. Now you have some others already in there that I are do. typical examples of what, what spreadsheet users want. Show us a couple very of them. Very typical. This is a uh, spreadsheet where I brought it up, and usually management's <clears throat> interested in having a title. So in this case, I want my title to be centered. Now I could gauge where that is, but by hitting Alt C, it comes up with a centering macro. macro. In this case, I'm going to type in Computer Chronicles. It's automatically centered. And it automatically yeah, centers right, it for me. Now, management is always interested in what day I did my reports on, so I'm going to default and pull the computer's date up by hitting Alt-T for today's date in words. Mm. Notice it's Saturday, January yeah, 19th. Yeah. A very easy macro to use. Now, I'm going to scan down to this next section here and show why we should use a macro as opposed. I'm interested in getting the sum of the quantities. Under Lotus, I would have to do at sum, parentheses, up, mark the range, range down, Close the parentheses, return. The answer is 335 right. units I sold. By blanking that out and using my addition macro, Alt-A, automatically oh, adds 335. Right. The same for the amount of money. Alt-A, I now know I sold 10,000 plus. Uh -huh. I can use sorting macros. For example, I brought the same information down right here, and I've sorted under location by California and New York. If I'm interested in finding out how much business I did on each coast, I use my subtotaling macro. In this case, it's telling me to point to the area that I want to sort on. In this case, I want to sort on California, and I'm interested in the amount of dollars that occurred. So you can see as it's subtotaled, I did $5,700 wow. worth of business yeah. in California and $4,750 in New York. All right, James, I don't have to interrupt you. We're running okay. out of time. I want to take a look at Word Perfect. Right. If you can okay. slide the keyboard over to I Gordon sure there. Can. And Gordon, why, why, why does somebody really need a book? I mean, you, you buy Word Perfect, there's the manual, there's the macro function, yet, yet everybody kind of seems helpless without some help like from your book. Well, right now, uh, the, the documentation for the macro feature in the manual is not covered extensively. Yeah. Another thing that a book does is it, is it does offer a security blanket. Mm -hmm. uh, thirdly, this 
my particular book and the way I wrote it with a specific uh, idea in mind is to provide finished applications so they didn't have to go through and do it right, themselves. Right. However, by teaching macros and teaching how to do it, they could then modify them for their needs. But you're actually still giving them templates in the, on a disk. Exactly. That's why the book is called Macro 5.1 Macros and Templates. Yeah. All right, right. Show us some of your, your favorite or our favorite macros. Great. Uh, just like in Lotus 1, 2, 3, Word Perfect Macros are, are mainly there to uh, save on time and keystrokes. Right. Uh, one example is uh, uh, even the simple task of changing margins in Word Perfect. Right. Different formats. Right. That alone takes uh, some 10 keystrokes and uh, uh, quite a number of seconds, depending on if you can see the, the right. screen from where I am. Okay, I'm going to change the standard margins on either side from 1 inches to 2 inches. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, now that took, as I said, 10 uh, seconds and uh, 10, a bunch 10 of keystrokes, keystrokes yeah. or so. I've already written a macro, and uh, if you watch very carefully, Boom. There it is. Okay. All right. That macro duplicated the keystrokes. Sure. Of those and ten. That exactly right. Okay. Show us another trick. All right. Uh, an another uh, similar task is changing the tabs uh -huh. from their default uh, every uh, five spaces to every ten spaces. Mm -hmm. Now I am going through the same steps as uh, I would. Uh, Normally. Normally. Yeah. However, I'm recording the macro right now. So you're actually creating the macro. I'm actually okay. creating the macro on the fly. And there it is. Now, there, the, uh, uh, the macro that I've already created, uh, the name is called tab. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just run that macro. You can't see it, but I'm going to go ahead and press tab. the tab key, and there's and every you're, 10 you're, spaces. Exactly. Yeah. Right. All right. What about what about another one? All right. Uh, these two macros uh, are single function. I started them. They ran. They finished. They didn't pause for user entry. Right. Quite a number of times you want to put in some variable information. This one is a is a very very common uh, application. It's fill out a, a, a fax cover sheet. I've called it fax. It enters in the boilerplate information, the date, my name, and I'm going to put in who I want to send it to. Mm -hmm. It asks me then the number of pages. So I'm going to put in, let's say, five pages. Then you'd write the message. Uh-huh. Uh, in this case, uh, I, I didn't put that in for time constraints, but uh, uh, this macro just assumes that I'm going to go right straight to the printer right. and print this document. In addition to these macros, which are very simple, WordPerfect contains a whole slew of programming commands. Yeah. And you can do quite a number of uh, very sophisticated things. All right, real quick, we only have about a half minute. I want, I want you to show me that page formatting All right. macro you This have. is called uh, Marge Set. It is a feature. I, I've written a macro that is not uh, found in WordPerfect. Mm -hmm. it, it is a brand new feature that uh, I've created all on my own. It shows a, uh, the outline of a, of a page. Uh -huh. Current margins. And the corners are showing us the actual representation exactly. of where the margins. Exactly. Just and, by pressing uh -huh. the cursor keys, I can I can move things around. I can change the left margin, the right margin, whatever, and uh, move it around the page. And when I'm done, press and it does a single it. key, and it's done. That's great. All right. Well, that was terrific. Well, when time is of the essence, the macro can be a savior. And where is transaction speed more important than on Wall Street? Well, it's no surprise then we find a lot of macro users among stockbrokers. We have a report from the Pacific Stock Exchange. With thousands of shares changing hands daily on the Pacific Stock Exchange, tabulating data on the trades can often be a tiresome and complicated process. The exchange uses macros to keep track of such data on a spreadsheet. Every month, the exchange prints out a report on its Quattro spreadsheet program that shows monthly trading activity for specific companies. A series of macros are used to set up that spreadsheet. The first macro sets the new number of trading days and determines the average daily trades. A second macro sets the new month headings. Yet another macro calculates the cumulative total trades for the current month. The data is sorted by daily volume and then ranked by a final macro. What the macro has ensured is that every cell on that spreadsheet that required a monthly edit uh, was in, in fact performed. Every, there's a couple of uh, formulas which had to be edited each month or you would get incorrect results. These macros have ensured that all those formulas were, have been edited and edited properly. 
Billing information is then sent to member companies based on that spreadsheet. But macros have increased productivity at the exchange at a more simple level as well. To eliminate the cost of expensive letterhead paper, the exchange customized a macro on its WordPerfect program that it uses for in-house memos. That macro prompts the user to type in all the information. It sets the page format and even prints the exchange logo at the center of the paper. These two very different shortcut methods show the versatility of macros. The use of macros is becoming more and more predominant in the exchange. The more our users, uh, first of all, realize how productive they can be by using them, the more they want to write new macros. So it almost becomes an infectious fire. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Kate McGargy. In the Macintosh world, Excel is the leading spreadsheet and QuickKeys is the leading macro program. And here to show us a Mac macros are Chris Van Buren, author of a new book on macros for Excel. And also with us, Richard Ski, president of CE Software. Tim? Now, Richard, we've seen earlier in the day on PCs why you would need macros. They were much more difficult to use. But the Mac seems to be just one of these nice click and shoot type things. Why do we need a macro on the Mac? In the interest of productivity, um, on the Mac, the thing that makes the Macintosh easy to use makes it somewhat cumbersome as you get used to it as well. Um, Quickies is something that, that works within, within the Finder, within any program or universally, and it, and it shortens the amount of time that you need to use on the computer. Hmm. All right, Chris, we've got Excel up here, and that's yeah. sort of your specialty, using macros right. inside Excel. And, and let's try to address Tim's question and show some uh, sure. examples of how you would really get more productive and move faster with, with macros. Well, the main thing macros are used for, as we've seen over and over, is to uh, save time uh, and keystrokes. I'm going to show you one quick example of that. Uh, normally, to format information, I've got a little budget here. I could format a cell and uh, using a number of right. these format commands, I'll just do one of them here, changing this into a uh, numerical uh, dollar sign type mm -hmm. format. Um, with a macro, which I programmed earlier, uh, simply control F for format, uh, I can turn that into a uh, number of different formats. Right. Uh, that would have taken uh, five or six different, sure, otherwise. different formats otherwise. Um, but some of the more sophisticated macros can uh, say, ask the user for information or move, uh, move around to various uh, areas of the worksheet. I have a couple here that I'll just show you. Um, uh, one that uh, will ask the user for information, uh, inputting a value, you can type a value here and, and so on. And uh, you may wonder, well, what, what can you do with that value? When, when would you use that? And let me show you the macro that's actually creating that, and I'll modify it very quickly for you. Uh, it's this one here, I think. Yeah, um, the macro itself is here called input at the uh, top middle. Oh, went too far there. And uh, down here, I have three extra commands that I'm going to now move up into this macro area here, which will, uh, which will actually do something with the input value. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be a little more sophisticated uh, version. But as you can see, the macro is not that complex. Okay. And now when I uh, input a value, I'll just do the macro again right here. Uh, I can type, say, 5, and it's going to add 5 to it and display the answer. Yeah. Um, now that's just a hypothetical example. But, uh, and then some of the more uh, maybe intermediate level macros, uh, macros can get way more advanced than this, but uh, one thing that, a, that a, a beginner or intermediate user can do is create his own custom menus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got one here that combines uh, some of the com uh, macros that I just did uh, with Control M to bring up the menu. Up there in the right corner of the screen is the special menu that mm -hmm. I just added. And inside are these macros that uh, these, uh, this is the format macro I did earlier mm -hmm. and the get input right. macro I just did. And, um, let me show you one that does uh, even more. It brings up what's called a dialog box, uh, which is, uh, this one is custom designed. Mm -hmm. And this just uh, jumps to one cell or another using a, an option mm -hmm. button. And if I click OK, it'll, it'll jump to that cell. And then the final macro here is a, uh, a one that you should always include in a mm -hmm. menu, which is to get rid of the menu itself. Mm -hmm. And if you watch the menu there, it just erases. And you can see pretty, uh, that pretty much all of those macros I just showed you are on this uh, very small page, and they're all pretty pretty easy to, uh, to look at. How about manipulating charts or graphics inside Excel? Yeah, uh, let me show you something. I have a chart here. Uh, let me get that up uh, here. Uh, have a macro that will, um, uh, let me bring up the, the macros actually that will manipulate this chart. Okay, these are a few that I mm -hmm. uh, programmed earlier. Uh, very simple actually. Uh, get the chart back there. 
Um, one of the things you want to do with a chart is look at different types of, of charts. Um, and here I've, uh, with a simple keystroke, right. I've Let's allowed go you one to, to another. Uh, go to one another. Uh, if I want to look at that as a line chart, for sure. instance, or um, as a pie chart, right. or yeah. a bar chart, mm -hmm. for Great. example. All right, Chris, I'm going to ask you to slide the keyboard over to Richard now. And Richard, up until now, we've been seeing rather product-specific approaches to macros, and you have another approach now. Tell us about quick keys. Quick keys will work whether you are in the Finder, whether you're within applications, or you can define them to be universal, so one macro will work at any time. We uh -huh. avoid the word macro because it's not that hard. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're going to start by accessing quickies. It is accessed in the desk accessory menu, although mm -hmm. it's not. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and open it up, and what we're going to do is define an action. Virtually everything that you do on the Macintosh can be broken down into individual actions. Um, this this menu has virtually all the actions that you need. And, mm -hmm. and, and to pick an action and assign it, we simply, well, we'll go to a, the specials menu. And I want to select the rear window. We'll do some finder things. Um, I am going to uh, assign the escape key to that. I tap the escape key. We close it. And if you've ever moved a lot of windows within the finder, oh, yeah. you'll notice that it's nice to be able to just tap a key well, and have yeah. them move. As a matter of fact, I can tap another key and have it zoom. And then you more appreciate the ability to move them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're now going to hit another one to close the windows. And we'll move on to, that, that's an th those are individual actions. We'll now use actions within sequence. I've, I've pre-recorded one to open up MacWrite. Mm -hmm. um, it'll open it up. It will do all the setup. It first of all grabs the, the current date from the system. Um, it's mm -hmm. going to modify the fonts and, and set some yeah, tabs that, and yeah. the margins and whatever. You'll notice that it's going through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, now in my, in my letter process, I would, I would want to label it. I've talked with Doris a bit lately, so uh, mm -hmm. I have her on file. And now we need some boilerplate. I don't remember where it was. I'm going to uh, take a look at my quick reference card. It's a live quick reference card. Um, I see boilerplate right there, and I can click on it, and it mm -hmm. automatically it adds it. Wow. I, need to, I need to sign off. Um, <laughs> and Control S gives me my sincerely Richard A. Ski. Now that I've got the letter, um, we print it out, and it's time to do an envelope. Mm -hmm. A whole other series of actions are necessary. I highlight it, and I just by chance have another key set up. It's going to open up a new document. It's going to copy, paste, reformat, et cetera. It's going through a lot of steps, oh. and it's already, it, it even does the, the hand feed for the printer. Um, I'm going to cancel out of this at this point. We're going to take a look at what just did that. I'm going to filter out everything except sequences and here it is address envelope I double click on it and look at all the steps that we would have had to go through by hand yep, to get absolutely. there. Absolutely amazing. Probably the most significant part of Quickies is its extensions. Um, it was designed so that third-party programmers could extend it and we saw some right out of the chutes. Um, Stuff It and Disk Doubler right. have given the capabilities sure. of using their products um, with, within Quickie sequences. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, at some of those extensions. First, we'll define one, um, just as we did before. We're accessing quickies. We will go to the extensions part of the menu. Something that everyone uses is the control panel. Mm -hmm. We're going to grab the general control panel. We go to that quite often. Um, I'm going to put it in the quickies menu so that we can take a look at it. Close quickies, and now we have the general control panel that can pop up. Only that one, you'll notice again, it comes up very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, uh, we'll close that. We will select everything so you can see some color and we'll show you just a couple of other extensions. One in particular is, one in particular is going from um, color to black and white. Or we can go right back, excuse me, we can go right back to color. Terrific. Each individual quickie can have a time attached to uh -huh. it. Um, a perfect example of that is within one program only, I want a save command to happen every 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Or the ultimate example to string a number of sequences together, or a number of elements within a sequence together. I can have a quickie that goes off automatically every night at midnight. It opens up desktop. It finds everything I've modified that day. Um, it, it compresses right. them. It mounts an Apple share volume. It copies them off. It shuts the machine down. Richard, we're out of time. Chris, thank you very much. You. That's our look at software macros. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news.
random access file this week, Microsoft has unveiled a new version of its Excel spreadsheet for the PC, which it says takes better advantage of Windows 3.0. Among the new features are a function called Solver that allows users to find the optimum solutions to spreadsheet problems. The new Excel also has enhanced graphs, colors, and mouse controls. A company called Fora in San Jose, California, has unveiled what it claims is the first laptop computer to use the 8386 chip instead of the 386SX chip. Fora says they're also the first company to offer an optional expansion chassis. The chassis has slots for two full-length and one half-length expansion cards. Compaq Computer says it can't keep up with the demand on the LTE 386S20 notebook laptop. The company seems to be suffering from a shortage of key components including disk drives, display panels, and and 386SX microprocessors. Retailers say they expect to catch up on back orders by March. NEC has launched a portable cellular workstation. The system includes a portable phone, a cellular interface, and the NEC ultralight notebook computer. No word on prices just yet. Taking a look at this week's top 10 software titles for the PC, PC Connection reports that TurboTax from Chipsoft is number one, with Expanded Memory Manager coming in second. Third is Entertainment Pack for Windows, followed by Adobe Type Manager and Quicken. Rounding out the top 10 PC titles are WordPerfect, Andrew Tobias's Tax Cut, Windows 3.0, The Norton Utilities, and Adobe Plus Pack. Time now for this week's software review. Here's Paul Schindler. Information about the world can come in many forms, most of them bulky, for the world is a large place. You can learn about it from a globe, from an atlas, or from a new CD-ROM package called World Atlas. You need the storage capacity of a CD-ROM to hold all the information this package does. It allows you to cruise around to your heart's content. It is fast, but be forewarned it takes all of 640K and you may have to strip everything else out. Now let's go to the Caribbean, which is always a good idea. Focus in on the U.S. Virgin Islands. Examine a political map with place names. Look up detailed information about communications. Going back to the world view, you can look at a topographic map as well as statistical maps covering such things as temperature, precipitation, fertility, electricity, and population density. It's surprising how fast the screens can be changed, especially if you want to go back and forth between two maps. You can also print copies of these maps. World Atlas is $60 from Software Toolworks in Chatsworth, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Computer Friends has introduced a small portable PC that can be used to swap files with a Macintosh. The new 2001 Data Dream is an 80C88 based PC which converts text files to Microsoft Word format on the Mac and spreadsheet files to the Mac Excel format. Files are exchanged with the Mac via modem or serial port. The three pound laptop runs on AA batteries. Computer Friends has also introduced real time video capture hardware software combination for the Mac 2. It can take images from camera, VCR, or TV and store them in a database. Well, finally, Mac Week reports that the Big Mac isn't the only Mac in Moscow. Moscow Magazine has created a high tech island in the Russian Republic using Mac 2 CX computers to produce a Western style magazine. The file still must travel to Amsterdam for color offset printing, but all production takes place in Moscow. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Maria Gabriel. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software. The SBA provides information on how to stay software legal. Funding is also provided by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.